Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we got a couple, actually quite a few, of very interesting physique updates of some top names, actually. So let's get straight into it. As you can see in this first video, we get Flex Lewis. I don't even know how many, like 5-6 years post-retirement, and he looks damn good. There is something about his 212 guys, they manage to retain the muscle, quite a bit of it. For example, Seth Ferrosi, now Guy Cisternino, and now you can see Flex Lewis. Not just they maintain like the muscle size, they don't really stay the same size. I mean, Flex was obviously much bigger when he was full-blown in the midst of his career preparing for the Mr. Olympia. But there is something, again, these guys, these 212 guys, they maintain the shape, like they lose the size, but they still look good. They don't look like melted candles like most of the open guys do after they retire. These guys apparently are able to, to maintain the shape for some reason. Now, yeah, they are smaller, they're 212, but they are also much shorter, so for their height, they're also very, very big. I mean, Flex Lewis was not small, man, like, he was really big for his height. So it's not like classy guys. When classy guys retire, they can maintain good shape easily because they are not overly big. They don't stretch their skin. They don't make their waists bigger when getting big. 212, it's the same like the open. The guys are just shorter, but for some reason, they are able to keep the shape, to look good even after they stop juicing, they stop uh, trying to get and stay as big as possible. It very well could be just a coincidence. Maybe it's just because, as you can see, Flex is still training very hard. He's doing the cardio, he's probably eating right. Uh, Seth Ferros is doing the same thing, I believe guys Sternino as well. So it's probably a combination of like not weighing over 300 pounds in the offseason and just trying and training very hard and eating properly after they retire. And that's probably the reason why Flex Lewis is looking this good, even though he's retired. He's lean, he still has a shape, he maybe doesn't have the same mass like he once had, but he still looks like a competitive and successful bodybuilder. Wouldn't you agree? If you guys are trying to get in the best shape of your life, there is a supplement by the old school apps, it's called Vintage Burn, that will help you get in the best shape of your life. Now, I know some of you guys don't like the fat burners, the natural fat burners, but guys, whenever I'm prepping, I'm using this stuff. I mean, I get a package of all the old school app supplements and I use this, why not? And I gave it to one of my friends and uh, she said that she was sweating profusely while, he, while she was doing the cardio on this stuff, so there's probably something to it and it's all natural, it's all plant-based and I got shredded uh, doing the cardio and doing everything with this. Would I get in the same shape without it? I don't know, but I always use this, so I think it helps. If you guys want to try it, there is a link down below if you want to use the code EVAN, you get a 15% discount and you also help me out, so thank you guys. Alright, next up we got Big Remy, and let's just get this out of the way, this photo was posted today, but the, the caption wasn't the same, a lot of people thought this was recent, and uh, in the end Big Remy edited the caption, he added that this was in 2020, Kuwait, people were watching this photo and they thought he fixed his triceps, and his biceps, and his forearms, and that he looked fresher, and that he was gonna come back and like win the Olympia again, and there is this guy in the comment section that that basically created a comment that was an old pick button and he had a lot of likes. So Big Remy probably saw that and he saw all the conversation that was going on and he added the caption Kuwait 2020, meaning that this is not a recent photo, this is in fact an older photo. You guys remember Horse MD, Marcelo D'Angelis? I'm sure you do. He is being coached by Milo Sharchev, and here this is him and, and, and Rafael Brandau is taking a photo of him. Uh, these guys are both Brazilians. And as you can see right here, yeah, the horse MD is not gonna be doing classic physique anymore, obviously. I mean, last year he tried to get down to make the weight cap, and while doing that, like, the guy almost died. It was so hard, and he didn't even manage. In the end, he tried to cheat. To somehow squeeze into the classic physique to manage but he didn't do it uh, he was way too heavy for it and that was last year and after that he said that he was suffering so bad that he was doing all kinds of extreme things and that he doesn't want to do that thing again to go through that again i know how tough it can be trying to make the weight uh, when you are like when you are a couple of pounds over the weight cap I know a lot, of, I never did it, I always had enough weight for my categories, but I know people who, around me 
who had this struggle and you know it can be really tough it can be really tough on your health on your on your mental health and on your physical health as well so horse md is not going to be doing that marcelo d'angelo is going to be doing the open bodybuilding from now on and uh, finally we can see that he actually made some serious gains i think he went off of everything for quite a while there after that failure in classic physique and uh, he then started packing on the tissue and now as you can see he is big he is really really big now is he as big as your average top open pro no he's gonna be on the lighter side on the more classic side but with his shape with his small waist, with all the lines, look at the beautiful physique, he has, he has really such a beautiful physique that he would do really well in the classic if he actually managed to make the weight, uh, but no, he couldn't, so he's gonna do really well in the open with his classic shape and with a ton of muscle that he obviously packed on, so I can't wait to see this guy on stage. Now, as you can see, like he's a little bit shorter than, than Rafael Brandau, so he's not a, a, a short guy, but he's not very tall either, so how much do you think he weighs well here's your answer 130 freaking kilos today which is 285 86 pounds guys that's heavy for this conditioning for his height 286 that's a lot i have no idea how low will he have to go to to get in shape but again last year he was almost able to make the classic weight so like how much could have he gained in a year I don't think he's going to be competing at like 260, if he's 285 now, I'm guessing maybe 230, 235, I, I don't know, you guys tell me, I don't even know how tall he is, what was his weight cap in classic physique, but yeah, he seems to me that he's on the smaller side, but he added a lot of muscle, I mean, look at that side leg, look at the, look at the hamstrings, and then the arm as well, like, he definitely gained a lot of muscle, once again, 286 at this point, and in the caption he also says, uh, uh, how many weeks do we think he's out of a show and i don't know i don't know which show he's doing but yeah he looks good like he looks improved he looks bigger rounder fuller and with that weight i'm expecting him to be much bigger than the last time we saw him on stage so and with his classic shape and lines he's gonna do well no doubt about that all right and finally we get to the most interesting part of this video at least for me uh, it is the texas pro preview so we got a physique update, a posing video of both Andrew Jacked and Hunter Labrada. First, we're gonna check out Andrew Jacked, who basically is saying that he has a new physique. He says that he's about to unveil the upgraded version of Mona Lisa, uh, meaning himself. He calls himself Mona Lisa of bodybuilding. Because yeah, I, I get it, his physique is truly a piece of art. And now you can see the conditioning at this point a couple of weeks out, and it's good. It's definitely very good, and you can see the back, it also looks kinda thicker, let's check out the video again. From the front he was good even last year, I have no worries about that. Very very aesthetic, good quads, good abs, good chest, uh, wide shoulders, big arms. Now what I, what I am worried about is his side poses, like thickness, especially the hamstring thickness, and like the upper body, like back to chest thickness. And also from behind, you know, the hamstring separation and the back. Now you can see right here that his back looks improved. I think, look at the lats, how they're hanging. Like, he has bigger back for sure. I don't know about the hamstrings though. They don't really look any, they don't really look good here. I wouldn't say they are improved. But the back does look improved. And also, like, his conditioning for this point in prep is very, very good. He is being coached by Chris Asito. So they're probably gonna nail it this time around. If they didn't add the Arnold, now they had more time together. And I'm guessing Chris Sito probably learned his body a little bit more. So I'm expecting a more conditioned and fuller and muscularity-wise improved physique of Andrew Jacked at this upcoming Texas Pro. Is that gonna be enough to beat Hunter? I don't know, once again, like Hunter has that side leg thickness he has those hamstrings he has that upper body back to chest thickness so he is overall thicker uh, is he as pretty no is he as conditioned probably won't be is he as big well he is shorter but for his frame i think he is very big uh, his head is enormous and that makes his physique look smaller when he's standing there alone but on stage you're gonna see how big this guy actually is and here's the physique update of his 
And you can see right here also, this guy got in condition, like really good condition for only a few weeks out of a show. And I don't think he was ever this lean at this many weeks out. So, yeah, I mean, last year at the Mr. Olympia, like he probably chased the conditioning a little bit too hard and he got flat. Look at the back now, definitely better than last year. And also, I think they went a little bit more slowly this time around. And again, he's in shape early. So look at the back, look at the Christmas tree. And look at the width as well. Like he has it all, man, right now. So they took it slow, a little bit more slowly, and he was in good shape uh, weeks before the sa before the stage. He is actually in shape weeks before the stage. So they can take it easy, you know, take their time to land this plane properly. Him and Ben Chow, I hope they will do it. I hope they're gonna give us a great show. Who would I like to see win from these two guys, Andrew or Hunter? I don't have a horse in this race. I don't really care who's gonna win. I want to see both of these guys at their best, and I want them to. I want the best man to win, and that's it. I don't really have a favorite in this battle. But if I was a betting man, if I had to choose one physique, hell, man, I don't even know. <laughs> but I'll say Hunter. I'll say Hunter because last year the Mr. Olympia Hunter beat Andrew, and he looks improved. And I don't think if Andrew looks that much improved. So, yeah, even though a lot of people think Andrew is gonna beat Hunter, I wouldn't be too sure. I would bet on Hunter, really. But whatever you guys think, tell me in the comment section down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. If you guys wanna support me and this channel for making all the awesome content for you guys, you can do that by checking out the link down below in the, cap in the caption of this video and using the code EVAN to get a 15% discount. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe. All the best and bye-bye.